You're now listening to the Young, Educated, and Uncertain Podcast with your host, Rashad Young. Hey, my good podcast family. Welcome back to another episode of the Young, Educated, and Uncertain Podcast. Today I have a guest, man. This this doesn't need an introduction, but it does. You know, uh, this, this is one that holds near and dear to my heart. This is my cousin. She's an author. She's a speaker. But she's also my first co-host <laughs> when it comes to podcasting. Uh, we started off with a podcast in 2017 called Van Chronicles. Uh, we, we can talk about that story in just a sec, but I'm here with author and speaker, my good cousin, Erica Walker. How you doing, Erica? I'm good. How are you, Shad? Good, good. Long time no see. I'm sorry, Rashad. <laughs> yeah, you know, Shad, Rashad, people don't know all the nicknames, but you know, you know, on the, uh, on the podcast, I was known as R.Y. and you was Lady R.Y. But <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good, you know. It's a, it's a Sunday, you know. Just thankful for another day. Got me a haircut this week. Feeling better about myself, you know. It's good, you know what? <laughs> uh, you know, hey, going week to our haircuts, man, is hard. But you know, uh, I'm always thankful. I'm always able to be safe in these environments. But I want to get into it, man, because your story is very inspiring. I feel like that me knowing you personally and, and me, you know seeing you on the daily, I know what type of story you have, but you know, we can get into everything. You know me, uh, but I want people to know more about you. If you want to, you know, care to dive into your, your situation, how to change everything, but how it also, how you kind of change from your situation as well, become an author, a speaker, all these great things. So without further ado, I'm going to give you the mic. Um, well, Erica Walker, as Rashad said, I'm his older cousin. Not that much older, but his older cousin. Um, I'm an author. I uh, I actually wrote um, four short stories in my book, and I was, three of them I wrote while I was in college. I went to the University. Um, I went to the University of Missouri, St. Louis, and I had a writing class. It was um, I believe a creative writing class, mm -hmm. and they were like assignments. And so um, I wrote stories, and then I wrote my last one partially in school, and then I finished it at home. And um, each one has a little bit of me in them. Um, unless you know me personally, you would know it was or it was fake. Um, and it's all some some of it's like embellished of my you know my own imagination things like that. Um, but there's there's, there's short stories that's are helping the younger generation who would deal with different issues of, difficult issues of life such as like isolation, peer pressure, self esteem, not feeling like good enough, things of that nature. Um, I've always loved writing ever since I was a young girl. And I just, um, I kind of put it down for a while when I, once I got hurt. And so, uh, cause I didn't use either my hands. And so mm -hmm. I used my one hand, I was going to get back to write again. So it kind of um, picked up for me, back, picked up for me after that. Um, so yeah. And then there's other things, but. Yeah, no. And obviously I know that you were a, a writer way before me. Um, you always had a passion for writing and being creative, but you, you mentioned your story. And I think that is the most important thing. Obviously, out of all the other accomplishments that you have done and succeeded, but I think your story is very powerful um, in how you overcame something, something that was that tough. You mind diving deeper into that story? Not at all. Um, so on June 1st of the year 2008, I was shot in my head um, by straight bullets. Um, I was at a, a gas station. And some people say, you know, wrong place, wrong time. And um, and I, I get that notion. Um, and so uh, I was like I said, at a gas station and um, I know what was going on and um, was, was, struck by a gun, was struck by a gun. And I didn't, I don't, I don't recall like the initial, um, I didn't, I didn't see anyone. I didn't even hear a gunshot. I just, I remember feeling like a scared feeling. And I remember like my heart like beating real, real fast. And um, I just, I felt like in my spirit that something was going to happen, but I just didn't know what. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like on movies, you know, you black out, like it's like a, a scene, it, it goes, the screen goes black. That's exactly how it happened. And like, it's, it's, it happened just like that. And so like the process of, uh, I could say getting shot, I don't recall. But I was told, you know, when I was in ambulance, things like that, that I felt like a couple of times. I had a seizure, stroke my right side, um, which left my right um, hand and arm to be impaired, my right side to be impaired, but it's getting stronger every day. Um, I've, I, I, uh, I uh, 
lost my I had lost my voice for about four months. Um, I couldn't talk and communicate with my family. Um, I I I could use my eyes, you know, and I did use my eyes. I used to wear my eyes a lot <laughs> if I could add it to whatever. But um, I did it a lot, and also um, I was in a coma for a month and a half, and so in an induced coma because when I got to the hospital, they had to um, put me in an induced coma. They had to do like a bedside surgery to drain my um, to drain my, my brain because it my my, my skull had like enlarged a lot, and the swollen had um, the fluid, I guess. It got so big, I guess, I don't know the logistics of it, but they mm -hmm. got, they had to drain it. And um, they, uh, so once that happened, I, I got have, I got have surgery after that. And then I went, they put me in this coma to get in my brain rest, things like that. And then um, once I woke up, I don't remember, I don't remember much. I just remember, you know, just being there and just seeing people and things like that. And like I had a feeding tube and, uh, you know, it was pretty bad. Hold that though. I gotta pause it really quick, real quick. Okay. And so with that, I remember I remember I was at I was at home. Um I think I think you all at the house. Um I, I forgot it was for a birthday or it was for something. I, I know it was somebody's birthday. It wasn't your birthday, was it? My, my birthday was at Friday. I had a small right. birthday um that Saturday night. Because you and you and uh, Jamil had the uh you had to go away for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, girls allowed. So. Yeah, I remember, I remember it was a girls thing, and my mom was like, we couldn't be there. And yeah. uh, I remember that day, the day of when when the incident happened, <clears throat> I remember we was in the backyard. I know we was, I think, 12 or 13, something like that. Um, we was in the backyard, and it was like a little bit later in the afternoon. And... My mom was like, she has a bad feeling. She kept saying it all day. I was like, um, <laughs> this is obviously, you all were still there when she was saying it. And I was just like, what, what's going on? And I remember, I remember there was a very uh, hysterical yell um, a little bit later on that afternoon. And I said, oh my God, Erica got shot. And I was like, you know, at first you, you don't register it at first. You're like, mm -hmm. I like, Erica. I'm like Erica who? Right. <laughs> You're like Erica, who? And I was like, oh, it's like Erica. And then I, I was realized it wasn't just you. It was, it was a couple of you all. And uh, obviously, I didn't think they knew the details just yet. Um, and I knew that somebody told my mom that was there uh, that you were on shot. And I just remember it was just hysterical crying. Mm -hmm. I remember my mom was like, just stay here. Everything's gonna be okay. And then I remember she told us later on, I guess that night what happened. I just remember that was just like this, there was like this utter silence of, you know, she was just here. And, and obviously when you hear something of that magnitude, you you automatically kind of think the worst. Because um, they were unsure about uh, your life. Um, yeah. oh, and, God rest, and God rest. I'm sorry, what were you saying? For a few weeks, they were like, touch, it was touching up for a few weeks. Yeah. Um, and you were you were in a coma essentially, right? Um, mm, the one, I was in an induced coma. Induced they coma. Up through the night, they were like she gonna make through the night. So mm. yeah, it was a follow through the night. So yeah, it was pretty and, good. And when you got out of that coma, do you you don't remember anything? You don't remember? Um, I mean, I would see like nurses and stuff. Yeah, you know, like. Mess with the machines or whatever. And so I was looking at so many different things, like so many machines. I had a trach in my throat. Yeah. Um, it was just so many different machines I was hooked up to. Because um, I had my feeding tube, I had my trach in my throat. And I had this and then the other. And um, my head my head was bandaged up and stuff. And obviously the doctors, they would come in and like, you know, I guess, I guess like um, change the, or like kind of, I guess, monitor the, um, wound or whatever and stuff like that, and it would hurt. And like I mean, they like tug on my head. I just look, look, I could do was look like, oh my god, like I almost said, like, please stop. But it's like I could do with my eyes was like a big whatever. And I think I cried a couple of times, but I mean, you can't talk, you, I, you can, can't communicate, but just you know, we make noises or whatever, or you know, you hand gestures. But it was a pretty, it was definitely a rough time period. It was definitely rough. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I've always admired about you um is your faith uh mm -hmm. you have a very positive outlook and it's very and very uh close relationship with god i would i would definitely say um uh, talk about that journey from 
it's been over 12 years till now. What, what kept you going um, throughout all that time? Because I know like anybody else, you know, I think that's one of those things where, you know, like your life changes mm -hmm. like that. And the things that were once normal aren't normal anymore. Um, so how, how does that, how does that journey change you? Oh my goodness. It's changed me a lot. I see things in different, um, a total perspective. Like I really, you know, you, you, I saw people in wheelchairs, but never like, I never paid attention to them. Like I saw them, but I didn't see them. And so until I was forced to see myself in this situation. And so for me, it just like, my, I, I've, I've always been in church most of my life and I've always had a faith in God, but I, I feel like it's been tested now. It's like, so we're going to do, you can believe, you can, you know, we can direct up, we're going to believe, we're going to, you know, we we'll do what you can believe. And so mm -hmm. I just do the latter. And I just do to stay positive and just know that, you know, um, regardless of the situation, I'm going to come out on the other side. I'm going to come out on top. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I keep doing what I know to do, you know, doing exercises, going to therapy, doing this and that, other, whatever. And your life, your life will you make it. You know, we can all, they, life, has, life happens to everyone. And it's, um, we have a choice of how we react to it. You can react in a negative way, you can react in a positive way. And so I just choose to react in a positive way and I just choose to believe every single day of my life when I get up that it's gonna be a good day. And I just, I make it a good day. You're, you make your day. You get to dictate what goes on your day. You choose the, you know, you, you can choose how you feel. You can choose all of that. Like we have so much control over that. And God wakes us up and he gives us the choice every single day to choose to be positive, choose to be negative. I could echo up every day mad. Well, that's, that's not gonna do anything. So I just was positive, and you know, just it, it 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 feels better. And two, it hurts my head just to you know be negative and just to you know um, be mad. It's, it's not it's not it's not good energy. I like having good energy around me. I like you know I like positivity. I feed off that. So no, um, going in, you know, just believe, just believing for just believing the best. And so because I know um, I know this is not the end for me. So no, I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I remember, I remember when that transition happened, I kind of got, I was able to see it firsthand. And it was one of those things where I, I learned a lesson um, about people. Uh, mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is just for the fact that, you know, when, when tragedy happens or a life altering experience, a lot of us are there at first. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So like, are you, friends or family you know the people that are real close to you but then like throughout time they don't know off, <laughs> they start off. Off. um mm -hmm. how did how did that affect you and i'm not saying as far as like as personal as like your family but how did that how were you able to navigate through that space with that the process of losing people like yeah because of because of a because of a situation that was out of your control well you know what I, I I've never experienced with anyone else, so it was totally new. Um, it definitely was hard, and I remember um, when I was in therapy at uh, when I was in St. Mary's Hospital, when I can talk about it back, talking again or whatever. I would um, my therapist would see me sad and things like that. They'd be like, "Why are you sad?" And I would say, "Well, you know, you know, I miss people, and you know, it it does hurt your feelings with people. You know, they they watch your life or don't talk to you as much or don't do certain things." But um, it was like, well, write a letter. And I remember um, mm -hmm. writing, like, whoever, whoever I wrote, I don't remember if y'all who I wrote, but I know I wrote a poem. I said, well, maybe seven, eight people or so. A little bit more, I don't know. But I, I wrote them, a, um, you know, a message on Facebook or whatever. But that's how people communicate and whatever through Facebook. And, um, and I remember writing, and I, I, had a, I had a few responses back and things like that. But it's just, it, it hurts your feelings, but you just learn how to, and that's when, that's when I actually, really, really, um, my leadership got stronger with God because I had to, so he, it just, just went on, just me and him. And so like people had left my life, it's kind of like, so what do I do? So I remember, I vividly remember going to my desk at, um, in, in my apartment or whatever. And I remember, uh, reading the Bible and looking at the, uh, I read the, my, my first career was the book of Job. And Job, he went through a lot of things. He lost a lot of people and he got shook with disease and things like that. And, it was like, well, dang, I didn't get choked with these, but I did get hurt, and it's, it's similar. And so people left his life, and, you know, things started happening. And I'm like, okay, so if y'all can get through it, then surely I can, too. And so um, just reading that and just being led by the Spirit and just um, 
overcoming it that way and knowing that God is with me. And that's why this one, I, like I said, my relationship got stronger with God because I didn't have anyone, well, I did have people around, but not like that. Not how, not how I wanted them to be around. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I a lot of people, well, I know I rely on people too much because, I mean, it's, it's fine to rely on other people, but you still gotta be okay by yourself, mm-hmm. for one. You gotta be okay with you and God. I mean, it's just, it, you, have, it, you have to be okay with yourself and, you know, accept who you are. And I got to know myself. I got to know how strong I am. I got to see what I'm made of. Mm-hmm. And so people in my life now is like, oh, okay, whatever. My dude's is like, whatever. So <laughs> it, it's no longer an issue because I, I know myself. I'm comfortable with myself. I'm strong in God. I'm strong. I'm just strong in so many areas. So it's like in a, in a lot of people's nature now. So I'm able to handle a lot better. So mm. yeah, you got to be strong. You got to know who you are. Uh, who you are. So definitely got to know who you are. And, you know, be, a, be, be okay with being by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> And that, my accident showed me that, like, people just don't know off and just, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, I think the book of Job is a very interesting concept of the Bible because it does kind of, I think every person has that book of Job moment where <laughs> everything gets removed. Um, yes. And it's like, how loyal are you to yeah. God? Is your faith as strong as it seems? Um, I think a lot of times, sometimes we as people, we are, you know, and this isn't a knock. I just think that we're always very thankful and gracious when things are always happening good. Mm-hmm. But when things are happening bad, you don't, you don't get that same response. And I think we all are, I think we're all are guilty of doing that at some point. But, you know, I just think that being around you so much, I've learned, I'm like, man, I, I don't, I don't know how she does it on a day-to-day. I remember when I graduated from college, my my real first job was really helping you, um, yeah. taking you to work, taking you to therapy. And that's how, that's how Van Chronicles was created. I mean, because we, I was, while I was so uncertain in that space of like figuring out my life and things that you think are important. And I'm like, I'm, you know, as somebody who, who really has it bad, who needs my assistance on a day to day to just kind of navigate through. So why am I complaining about something that's going to blow over? You know, I think it's when it, in those small moments, I was able to really figure that out. Like, OK, you're, you're kind of down bad right now. But in the, in the grand scheme, it's not that bad. It's just you're, you're trying to figure yourself out and you're trying to see you know, what's best for you. But it, it really, you know, it really, I think, put me in a, a moment where I'll never forget, like, people are very selective when they want to help out. Um, and that made me start thinking about, like, my own friends. Like, you know, if I ever got to this point, would my friends be there, you know? Or somebody that I'm with, would they be there throughout all this time? Because we always want people based off of what they can c- kind of provide right now but we always kind of peel back when it's not something that can, uh, you know, impact us positively in that moment. Mm-hmm. But transitioning to your book, transitioning mm-hmm. to your book, Through the Lens, the series of short stories. Talk to the people about that. What is the book about? Well, um, I, I pretty much stated, um, it's four short stories geared to helping young generation um, who may need help dealing with the, diff- the difficult issues of life, like, the, like I said, peer pressure, um, self-esteem issues, confidence issues. Because I, I, in middle school, I struggled with a lot of those things. And so I felt compelled to write stories to help other young people I know are in my situation or have been in my um, mm-hmm. situation. So I want to reach back and, you know, help them. And I started going to talking to schools, things like that. So it, it turned into a bigger thing than just these stories. So it evolved to more than yeah, I, I expected it to evolve to. Um, but you actually inspired my title. So you gave me the title. <laughs> that was pretty cool to collab with, um, with that. So it was just, it, um, it, it's, 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 short, it's short stories. Um, mm-hmm. they, have, they have real um, real facts in them, but you wouldn't actually, unless you know me personally, you wouldn't know what's um, possible, what's true, unless you know me personally. And um, they, they're, they're fun to write. Um, so yeah, they're, they're pretty good stories. I I have made good stories. I mean, not because I wrote them because not because I wrote them because I just and I I still get feedback. So it's like I know it's it got to be something going on with it. So mm. um, and it does my heart because some people still want it and they still you know compelled to buy it. So yeah, yeah. And it, uh, it's the pictures in the back right there of yeah, my. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the greatest. That's the greatest cover ever. Um, I remember when I think we was in the car. We was both talking about our books. I was first starting on mine. Yeah. But I, but I knew that I knew that you were almost done, and I didn't know if I could write a fiction book um, just yet. And that was going to be the title of a fiction book I was going to work about was through the lens. And and I was you know hearing about your story, and I was like, no. <laughs> Erica should have this title because it makes sense. It's literally through the yeah. lens of her life, her experiences. And yeah. I'm very, you know, thankful that we, you know, we did collaborate on that. But I felt like it was more fitting um, really for you to have. And uh, I'm very proud of you of that. And I'm very proud of you for doing it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You did that entire book essentially with one hand. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote, I mean, for the past 12 years, I've only had just my one hand. So, um, and I, I was right-handed. So I had, I had to learn how to use my left hand. And at first it's kind of, you know, like scribble scrabble, but now it's like, you can actually read it now. You can understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's just legible, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, it was definitely a transition with that, even, with that too. So, yeah. and then like, they, uh, on the therapy, they were like, well, you can use the device, you know, to speak into it. And I'm like, okay, I'll try it. I tried it and I'm like it was like I would say like words and it, it, it's just somebody didn't say and I'm like no man <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, no so uh, it was not work for me so I'm like I gotta I, I gotta figure it out so mm-hmm. either I, or I'll type this so I said okay I can type it yeah so. yeah that's uh that's so impressive and I I was just like she wrote this with one hand I'm like there's yeah. there's there's mm-hmm. no excuse I will say that voice to text thing really can be a pain um, it is. It, it, t- it say it say one thing. I say red. It say blue. It's like I need, <laughs> like yeah. Get yeah, on my nerves. I've been trying that with uh, this new book I'm working on, and while I think it's been effective to get certain points across, yeah. going back to fixing it, I feel like it takes. It, it's, more- it's too much. Just you want to just just do it yourself. Like you just yeah. Just, just yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's that's. Take up with the time, and yeah. Yeah. Well, answer this question for me. What is or who inspires you the most? Who who inspires me the most? Well, I don't have just one person. Like, (laughs) well, okay. Well, God, God, of course, God inspires me. Um, but a person, a physical person. Yeah. My cousin Candy, she definitely um, she's passed away now, but she definitely. I would I would send her my stories through email, and she would like. Uh, I don't I think anybody knew I was writing back then at this point, but mm-hmm. I would send I would email her my stories or whatever, and she gave me feedback or whatever and things like that. And I'm just like, so she's my biggest, she's one of my supporters and people personally believe in me. And you know, I'm most I would say, um, so she definitely pushed me to be better in that aspect of it. Um, another person, um, oh my goodness. Um, Raquel, the young lady passed away and my um at, when I was um, injured together. Um she definitely inspires me to, you know, to um fight for the young younger generation to get them to um think a different way, um, to be influenced by the right things to do, not the wrong things to do. Um who else inspires me? Um wow. <laughs> um the people like I feel bad, like name dropping, but it's like it just—I don't know. It's, 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 it's your personal preference. It's, it's you know, it's it, it can change throughout time. There's a lot of people that's inspired me, but you know, yeah. Other, other, other. Um, well, well, oh, I would say, Raquel, I would say, Raquel, for this book, Ra- Ra- Raquel, my cousin, definitely inspired me. That's mm-hmm. my new book writing. Um, did June first. Um, my this the this week me inspires me like. I'm in like a thousand one um, branded groups on Facebook, and I, I like love it. They're like so positive, like they're like so like they they give me so much energy. So it's like they inspire me um, with this book. Um, uh, God, God, a God, God as well. Um, let's see what's inspired with this new book. Um, I dedicated it to my brother that passed away because he um, he's. I found out like maybe. Maybe like the months after my birthday, I find he's gonna come surprise me for my birthday. No, no, months before he um, I think before he died, I find he's gonna come get me for my birthday, surprise me for my birthday. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know, I never knew that. And so 
um, that kind of um, inspired me a little bit more too. And he's on my book as my new book as well. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, so different books inspired different people different people inspired me for different books and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I mean that's 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 what it's all about. You know, somebody is pulling some sort of inspiration or helping you move forward. I kind of wanted to transition. Like I know you mentioned about the groups that you're in. What is, and this is just my personal, uh, I guess, question for your personal opinion. What is one misconception that people that are able-bodied um, do with people that aren't able-bodied? What's a misconception? Yeah, like what's up? Like what's a what's a misconception? You know, like sometimes when I've been guilty of this, you you know, going to a grocery store and you see somebody in a wheelchair or in a walker. And it's just kind of like this, like guilt, or it's like this alienation from what I, is I, the, like that type of stuff. Um. Well, I can see I can see for everyone, but for me personally, let me try first. Like I mean, it's it's, it's nice to say you need help with that. That's that's, that's nice, but I, I like let me try first. Like if you know me personally, I want to try first. Now I feel like a stranger in the street, you don't know. Like I always say. I accept it, but I almost I accept it. But like, if you know me personally, like, let me try first. Let me try. And I think people, when they see people in a wheelchair, like, um, I guess Ronald can't do a lot of stuff. But it's, it's not true. You can do more than people think we can do. Like, I know, I know some mom people in wheelchairs. Like, some mom, <laughs> I do. They drive and do all kinds of stuff. So we can do a lot of stuff. And I never knew a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm still learning myself. Different things, like, you know, we can do whatever. And even my own stuff, like. Like different things, like you know, you think it's it's, and I don't like saying I can't do it because I never tried it. So it's like how I know what I can do if I never tried it. So, mm-hmm. um, but trying different things. But I do. I do feel like this misception is that like you think we can't do stuff, or you think we want your help all the time when it, it really don't. Not when I watch. I think it got to be for everybody, but I know I want to try myself. Let me mm-hmm. try. If you see me like. Even if I if you, if you're struggling, like still let me try, let me, let me work it out, like let me work it out, like I want to get there. Because mm-hmm. I remember my um, when I when I had to learn um, and put even, put, my, put my shirt on. I can do it now without with any effort, like. But back then, it's like of course I of course I would struggle. So you want to be you a person like let me help you out. It's like okay, yes, but yes, it, yes, and no. Like mm-hmm. and if I had to go somewhere, like if I'm in a rush, I let you help me. But if not. I'm, I'm gonna take if I if I, if I need help, I already put my shirt on. I'm gonna have my shirt on, like right. <laughs> give me that time to you know what it, it makes you feel good knowing you accomplish something. Mm. Let me see small to some, but that's big to people who can um put men in the do for a while. So right. some difference, like you know, let's stuff around the house or whatever. If I can do it, let me do it. Like don't don't think on it. You do everything for me. So yeah. No, I think that I think that's valid. Um, and that was one thing I, I had to learn when I used to help uh, help you out. Um, it was like understanding that, you know, Erica was going to figure the, these things out on herself too and, you know, allow her to do those things because she's still a person at the end of the day. And, you know, she wants and, to... And I'm grown. I'm grown. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah. No. Um, that is... Uh, that is definitely true. I wanted to, I just want to get off topic for just a second. I don't know if you have seen the NBA, but I boy yeah. Brian, I boy Brian been hooping. Um, Has he? Yeah, he's been hooping. They they they've been scrimmaging this week. They start the season next week. You I got know. we got we got LA win the championship. Yes or no? Absolutely. I'm you know I'm hands down LA all day. Like hands, I'm a yellow one. Like hands down. Like <laughs> come on, man. come through. I'm so yeah. excited. I'm I'm a little like apprehensive, like I want them to be careful, but am I saw TV at Comic Con? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's basketball. Like, I do, like I love basketball. <laughs> but I mean I want them to be safe though. But safe for all things, so Yeah. It seems like it's working. It's, it seems foolproof right now. It seems like they have everything secure. Um and if you had to leave the bubble, you have to quarantine for like ten to twelve days. So <laughs> it, it looks they're looking they looking okay. I'm, you know, only thing that it's kind of disheartening right now is Brian got the gray beard. I'm like, Brian, time. Yeah, 
Gravy, gravy. He got is yeah. You know, you know, Brian, you know, Brian used products, so you know, um He needs products. What what, what that's supposed to mean? I, I mean he just has gray hairs. It's just most he used oh. products to block oh. out. But obviously he he's not using products right now, so you see the gravy. You see the out. gravy, man. That's like Brian, like Brian getting old. So Wait, he um, is he's gonna be he's not he's not sweet chicken anymore. Yeah, it's time. It's time. It's almost up, man. So we got we got to get one more. We got to get at least two. But he, you got, know. he got a few years on. He got a few years on. He still got a few years. He got about he got about three, three. I think he has about two or three good years left. Yeah, last year I'm not hundred percent. Sure. Strong, a strong three. Yeah, strong three. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's two four. So yeah. I need him to get at least. I need him to get at least one. I need him to. Have, I need Brian to have at least four four championships. Um, at least. No, did, they, did they win one yet? No, they they haven't won one yet. But Brian hasn't won since twenty sixteen. Um, because so, that was uh, Cleveland. I was gonna. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So he got to. He got to give me one more, man. Or people gonna get him. Oh, he's 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 getting he's getting one. He's getting another one. He's getting another one. I'm not gonna lie. If you don't get this one this year, I I'm giving up. I'm giving up. No, no, never. I, I try not to. All right, well, just I got one final question for you. One final question. Where do you see Erica in the next five to ten years? Um. Well, I want to have um. At least I could see four books under my belt. Um. Including the one I want to have already, and the one I'm working on, and then two or two more. Mm-hmm. And I can see myself having a short film. Um, I'm also a filmmaker. I also do um, documentaries and things like that. Mm-hmm. I can see um, Dead June first documentary. I can see that um, out. Um, I also my, my organization dedicates to Raquel. Um, I can see that being started as well. And me, like, no more speaking stuff, going to schools, talking to schools, things like that. And, um, yeah. So books, the books, um, more speaking engagements, um, short films. Mm. That's, and that's all in the process of work. So, yeah. Mm. I like that. I didn't even know about the uh, Raquel thing. That's actually really touching. Yeah. I've no making. Yeah, but yeah. I just have ideas, but I don't um, – I haven't like dived into it, um, right. but yeah, you know, this definitely works. Yeah, no, I know you're definitely a filmmaker in the making. Um, you've been doing it for so long. I know you got all these ideas, but I really, I really do think wholeheartedly that if the book is written in a way which I believe it will be, it, it will turn into a short film. Okay, again, I, I think your, I think your story is so touching and inspiring, and it shows the, it just shows the how how quickly your life can change and how you kind of go about it um and it's not to say it, it it's so crazy because it happened two days after my 21st birthday party so like my, my, my party was that friday i had yeah. just started and then i after her shot that sunday so it really happened really fast and really fast so yeah and i, I could see a movie in my head like <laughs> like i would start how it end like i could see i could see all that it gotta happen. So I know I just have to take baby steps towards making it happen. So yeah, no, it's gonna happen. It's, it's definitely gonna happen. Well, I appreciate you joining me today. This Absolutely. was this was this was great. Very proud of you as always. I know right. you're working working hard nonstop. When you're not working, you're working. Um, Never doubt when Earth is like. <laughs> Where can people find you at on on social media? You, you, got, you got a pen and paper. Do I have a pen and paper? Yeah, paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I got one. I got one. Where, um, where can people um, find you? On Facebook, I have Arthur Page, Erica R. Walker. Mm. Um, on Facebook, on Arthur Page, and um, I'm under Erica Renee, Wa- Erica Renee Famous Walker on Facebook. Mm. Um, on IG, I'm Erica R. Walker eight seven eight. YouTube, I'm under um but then, oh, oh no, not, I changed it. I'm under Erica Walker on YouTube as well. So yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that's so. Good. Well, hopefully your book's on Amazon too, right? Yes, it's on Amazon. Okay. 
through the lens, all that stuff will be in the link below if you're, if you're watching this or listening to this. So make sure you give her your support. You got to support Black writers yeah. as well um, in this process. It's a good book, too. So I'm not saying Black. that because she's my cousin. Black, Black, Story. Black Stories Matter. Yes, black stories definitely matter. So that's 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 definitely important. So follow her, subscribe to her, buy her book, and do all the great things in the world. Well, Erica, I appreciate you joining today. Thank okay. you. I appreciate this opportunity as well. All right. Well, you have a good one, okay? Thank you. Right. Bye-bye.